Hello and welcome to the CEO Show at the CEO Magazine. This is your host, Nick Vaidya, bringing to you Fred Cook, the CEO of Golden Harris, a PR company with presence in 50 countries. That started with Ray Kroc as its first client in 1956, when McDonald's was but just two stores and still is one of their largest clients. Among many other accolades, Golden Harris has been named the Agency of the Year a record eight times. Now about Fred Cook, our guest today, and why should anyone watch this conversation? Well, Fred is a very special individual. His history is special, and for all of those stuck in a rut trying to figure out, he offers hope and answers. Fred has had a meandering and checkered past and found his way in midlife. But those are the very same experiences that have allowed him to connect with people like Jeff Bezos, Steve Jobs on one hand, and on the other hand, connect with those who, shall we say, are more likely to be found in shady places. What you will learn from this conversation is that there are many paths leading to the same coveted places and why it is important not to worry too much about your ways as long as you are taking action and experimenting. So here's a person who peddled fake Italian letter to unsuspecting tourists, got arrested, divorced, fired, punched, and found his calling in midlife. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you Fred Cook. Now you have a very unusual story. Uh, to some extent, I'd say mine is a little bit unusual. I can, I can see parallels. That's why I'm really excited about talking with you. Uh, but the most important thing is what you've done is an inspiration to a lot of students and uh, people in difficult situations. So we just wanted to get a sense of, you know, where you're coming from and the lessons you've learned on the way. So why don't we begin with your start, which is, I think, uh, uh, something that you would best tell rather than I. Well, the, the purpose for writing the book, I, Nick, was I, uh, I speak at a lot of colleges, and I, and I find that students today are very much, uh, they're, they're stressed out, and they're stressed out about their lives, they're stressed out about their jobs and, or their ability to get a job. And I really found that my own experience, um, because I had such a circuitous route to becoming a CEO, is helpful to them. And they're often reassured to hear that there's more than one path to success. And that inspired me to write the book. It's really, the book is really dedicated to people who don't know exactly what they're doing, but are interested in figuring it out along the way. But it should be of value to a lot of other people who feel stuck in a rut, so to speak, and say, you know, I'm 45 years old and, you know, I'm, I'm, I've not done much in life. Yes. And, right. And your story is uh, going to inspire them to say, well, that's not necessarily true. Right. And I was 36 years old when I got my first job in public relations. I had had a dozen different jobs beforehand. So it was sort of a midlife trying to find a new career. So I have a lot of ideas about how people can can adapt and change jobs as well as as how they might get their first one. Now, you've done things that typically people don't do, the straight arrow people. Right. Uh, they, I call them straight arrow because they pretty much have their paths defined, they follow it, they reach certain yes. places. And some of them may do remarkably well, but remarkably, remarkably well comes only from innovation. And innovation comes from when you're at the bottom of something and you really, I mean, it comes from many sources, but yes. when you are in a, in a deep, dark pit, you have to be innovative to get out. Yes, yes. So what was your deep dark pit? Well, I've, I've been in many, I don't know how deep and dark they were, but I've had many ups and downs. And I think that you, you learn as much from failure as you do from success. And I always encourage people to try new things and experiment with their lives. And when you do that, sometimes it doesn't go that well but you gain a lot of courage in the process that helps you do whatever it is you want to do next. And, and that's why I've been able to go from job to job and experience to experience, and each time it gets better and better. So uh, you started at 36 in, in PR, and then yes. you eventually became a CEO of this company, and it's, it's a global PR firm. Yes. You've worked with some, some of the best-known names out there in the industry. Yes. 
uh, like Steve Jobs and, and Jeff Bezos and others. Right. So how do you come across to them? You, you, you know, you do not bring the traditional perspective of going to Harvard or to Stanford or any good school and then meeting with these people. Well, I think that a lot of the people that you meet in business who are successful didn't all go to Harvard and Stanford. So I, I don't have those experiences to share with people, but I have, I have worked with so many different kinds of people and I've traveled around so much around the world that I feel like I can relate to almost anyone, uh, regardless of their background, regardless of their, their cultural differences or their, their differences in economics. I, because I've done so many different things, I'm sort of comfortable with almost anyone. So it's, it, that's probably the best thing. So you can relate to people. Yes, I think so. Now, you, you, you know, you've, you've been a chauffeur, you've been yes. a, uh, a leather salesperson, you've been uh, a doorman. Sorry? I've been a doorman at a hotel, a cabin boy on a ship. I've been a school teacher, I've been a tour guide, I've done all different kinds of things, yes. So uh, how important is it to relate to people? I mean, obviously everybody knows it, but I, I want to hear from your perspective that it seems, seems like that's the one key skill that seems to have helped you in PR. Well, I think that it is very important, and I've always tried to expose myself to lots of people who are different than I am, not just people who look and, and, and like the same things as I do. And I think the more you can expose yourself to more different influences, the more ideas you have, but also the more you're able to relate to people that you're doing business with all over the world. I use one example, it's a very little example, but I, I encourage people to talk to taxi drivers. And I always, every time I get in a cab, I strike up a conversation with a cab driver. And it's remarkable what you learn talking to cab drivers because Invariably, in the U.S. at least, they're from every country around the world. Many of them were doctors or lawyers or engineers in the countries they lived in. And they all have interesting perspectives on global economics and politics in the U.S. and who should be president and what's happening with the economy. And it's just one example of reaching out to people that you might not ordinarily even talk to. But once you do, you find out you can learn all kinds of things from just everyday people. Now, I want to go specifically deeper into this idea. So there's, there's one path, the straight arrow path, the traditional path. Yes. Uh, like my older brothers, you know, very bright, yes. very smart. Uh, he heads up uh, the research side of a large uh, mutual fund company. Uh -huh. You know, he, he doesn't deviate easily. Yes. You can't make him do things, yeah. new things or, or different things. He, but he does what he does very well. Uh -huh. And that's his path to success. A lot of people follow that path. Uh, and they are very successful. Yes. And then there's the other path that you, you have come through and I have come through as well. Uh, a variety of experiences, uh, varied career path, meandering life. Uh, sometimes we may hit upon an innovative idea that goes boom. And, yeah. and you feel great about doing it and it may be financially successful, may not be financially successful. Most people in their homes when they are growing up are told to define a path, are told to go and uh, identify the talents and pursue them. Almost like, you know, right from the beginning, you should identify where you're going and continue to go there. Right. That's a safe path. But the path that you've taken and the path that you are recommending to those who are in that situation is one which is tricky and it's risky. You may not hit upon uh, something big. Right. So, what is it that is, what are the other critical ingredients, ingredients here besides a variety of exposure, uh, besides being able to relate to people because of your experiences, so you become a people person, which basically points to the EQ, the emotional quotient. You develop an EQ, the ability to manage people, the ability to manage your own emotions, the ability to see beyond uh, what seems superficial, and that's why you can relate to people and do big things. But that, that alone is not always sufficient. I mean, a lot of people, taxi drivers, for example, they meet a lot of people, but they, they still are taxi drivers. <laughs> right, 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 right. So what are the other things? Well, I, I think it's great if you grow up and you have very clear career goals and you set out to accomplish those and you go to the right schools and at the end you get the job you always love. I think that 
people are fortunate if, if they have that kind of concrete direction in their lives. But I think most of us, at least particularly when we're younger, we're not sure exactly what the right place for us is. We know we want to make a contribution, but we're not sure exactly how is the best way to do that. So I'm very sympathetic to people who are sort of figuring out life as they go along, which is why I call my book Improvise, because it's all about figuring it out as you go along. And there are elements to it that I think are, are very important. I talk a lot about people starting their own businesses and being an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs always improvise because they're sort of trying to figure out what's going to make this business successful. And you look at some of the technology companies today like Facebook and Reddit and WordPress, they're all started by college students. And not everybody that starts a business is going to be successful. I've started several that were huge failures. But you learn so much about business by starting one of your own. And even if the business that you have doesn't succeed, you can use those skills to help you get a better job or to help you inside of a corporation. So I think it's not always just being exper experimenting, but it's also learning in the process and then applying that learning to something that might be more traditional where you can bring a new perspective or a new idea that somebody else might not have. No, true. And I, I also, uh, I'm an educational psychologist by training, by mm -hmm. the way. And one of the things, one of my pet uh, discussion uh, or topic of discussion with, with amongst friends is that our education system tends to drill us things. They feed us and stuff us with uh, a lot of know-how. But mm -hmm. the real purpose of education is to take out what's within us because exactly. ultimately the world has been created by what people have brought and yes. contributed. And so there is tremendous amount of uniqueness in each individual but it has to be taken out. And I, I worry sometimes about people that are entering the business world because they do, they've all gone to the same schools, they've taken the same courses, they've all read the same books, they go to the same movies, they listen to the same music, and then they come into the workforce, they're a, kind of a commodity. They all have the same amount of information. And meanwhile, companies like mine and a lot of our clients are looking for fresh perspectives. They're looking for new ideas. They're looking for people with a different skill set. And I wonder sometimes where they're going to find those people if everybody is just sort of the same. And there's a uh, there's, there's the, the bunch of studies that show the CEOs point out to skills and leadership gaps as one of their top three concerns. Right. Well, I mean, you're getting educated, but still there's a, still there's a skills and leadership gap. Yes. And that's where in students and uh, others who are stuck in a rut at any age, doesn't matter, will find a solution that, you know, there is a need. We just cannot fulfill that need with a plain vanilla based personality or, or skill sets that you can bring. Everybody brings the same thing like the, you know, as if you've been constructed in a factory, you right. know, it wouldn't work. And so yes. that's why there's an opportunity. Right. I, I think people have this idea that, once they get a job in a company, that that company is going to teach them everything they need to know. And that's just not the reality anymore. Most companies don't have time to teach you everything you need to know. They want you to come to them and teach them something they don't know. So I think it's important for anybody, what, no matter what stage of you are in your career, to have some passion and some skill set that is uniquely your own. So you specialize in something that's important in the line of work you're doing. So when you come to a company, you can offer them something that they don't already have. And I think that's key these days into getting a job and then doing well on the job is to be bring, bring something new to the equation. Right. And it's, it's like the know-how. It's, uh, you know, you're given the sh helm of a ship or a boat or whatever you may call it. The know-how right. is not difficult. I mean, you, you know, you can read about it or learn about it fairly quickly. It's the ability to use your human intellect your, uh, your God-given inherent abilities, perhaps it's passion, it's, it's the, the way you make decisions, all those things matter. What do you bring to the table? Can you take and run with it? And you might make mistakes on the way and that's fine, but can you, are you determined enough to conclude and succeed as opposed to, oh, I hit a wall now, what do I do next? And I think people, especially younger people are afraid. Uh, they're afraid to step off the, the 
this, the standard path and they're afraid to try new things. And I think that uh, they need a little bit more courage and a little more encouragement to, to experiment a little bit with their lives. And I think when they do, they're going to find that their job experience will be much richer and more varied than if they sort of just stay with the, the standard program. Now, why do you think, and I'll, I'll point out a few thoughts of mine, that people are afraid to experiment? I mean, a lot of people, they, their nature is not experimental. They are, they are very, they have a clear cut path defined. They pretty much know which direction they want to head. Those people, as you said, are, are blessed in a certain way that they have clarity of purpose. Others are still struggling and experimenting. Doesn't mean that one or the other is any better, actually. Right. It's just that you are at different stages in life. But people are, are afraid, as you right, rightly said. Um, one of the reasons might be, hey, I'm wasting my time. I am 45 years old, I'm 25 years old, whatever the age you might, whichever way you're comparing yourself with the society, you say, I am wasting my time. And what if I go too far wasting my time and I have no, uh, no substance, I, I haven't gathered any mass. That's a very legitimate concern. And mm -hmm. you're pointing and saying, no, 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 it doesn't look like you haven't gathered mass. You've gathered something which is not clearly visible on your resume, but you've gathered something and right. make use of it. So isn't that a legitimate fear though? Well, sure, it's a legitimate fear. I think people are in the workplace, they spend half their time working and the other half worrying about their jobs. They worry about whether they're gonna get promoted, whether they're gonna get a raise, whether they're gonna be liked, whether they're gonna disappoint their parents, whether they're gonna have enough money to retire. All of those things are things people worry about all the time, but I don't really think that the worrying and the fear helps them in their jobs. And so I think it's, it's, it's important to overcome those fears and feel a little more confident about what you're doing. And, and, and my view is you come, overcome those fears by trying new things. Sometimes you start with little things like reading a different book or going to a different movie. And then you trans, transfer to bigger things like writing an interesting proposal or sending a, a compelling letter to a company you wanna work for. And the more you do those kinds of things, the more courage you gain. And I think it makes it a little bit easier. Yes, indeed. I mean, you, you know, you, the more you experiment, the more you learn. And entrepreneurship is fundamentally about that. Now, mm -hmm. one of the things that's happening is the globalization, because of the globalization and the telecommunication, a lot has changed. Uh, a lot of people are working on uh, as independent contractors. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, they are entrepreneurs at a different level, but they are entrepreneurs. They're more responsible for their money as opposed to the company being responsible for their salary. So this entrepreneurship concept becomes even more relevant that, you know, you are not living in a world there where someone will tell you this is a task to do and you do it and you make your money. Exactly. And I think that's the, that's the opportunity for everyone is there are uh, a, a lot of different ways to tackle the, your career. And sometimes you do it inside of a big company and sometimes you, you can do it on your own. And I think either path can be just as, as rewarding in the long run. Now, how long does it take? You know, I, we can clearly, or used to be 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you could define uh, that if you joined Exxon at this stage, you know, by this stage you will become this. And, then, and if you do well, if you keep on doing the, uh, the, the, the standard, pro follow the standard protocols, you're likely to be here at this point. Now that, that's gone away. Uh, you find people who have instant uh, success and there are a ton of examples in the, in the social media world, uh, young people becoming incredibly rich. So that has changed a little bit. Um, so if, if a person is floundering, so to speak, it's possible for you to be successful in something very quickly. In yeah. four or five years, you could be what others took 25, 30 years in terms of financial success or stability? I think one difference I see, particularly in our, the public relations business, is that we used to have so many different levels in our organization. And the difference between the people at the top and the people at the bottom is simply they had done it longer. They, had, they were older and more experienced. But I think in this day and age, with all the new technologies and all the new opportunities, the, the seniority factor is not as important. 
And that's why you see all these very successful companies that have been started by people who are in college or dropped out of college. So I think the opportunities for people to be highly successful at a younger age are much more prevalent than they used to be. And uh, I, think that's, I think that's a good thing for, for everybody. That indeed is. I mean, uh, yeah. too much experience in a certain thing is actually detrimental oftentimes because the technology or, or the skill kind of dies uh, by then and a new one is, is uh, up and coming. So like in your case, you tried several things, you failed many times. Typically, how much time do, do you recommend people giving to a venture? One year, two years, three years? What's been your experience? I, it takes twice as long as you think it will. So my experience has been if you think it's going to take two years to accomplish something, it will probably take four. If you think it's going to take five, it'll probably take ten. Um, in terms of people's careers, the one thing I find the most annoying is a lot of people who give career advice tell people that they need to change jobs every two years or every three years, and that over the course of your career, you're going to have seven, eight, nine, ten jobs. And that may be true for some people. But I also think that if you're working at a company that you really love and you're doing work that is really interesting and challenging, that you can have a great career staying at a place, sticking around and sort of reinventing yourself at the same company as opposed to switching every couple of years. I think a lot of young people miss out on that opportunity. And, and it's still a, a very good one, I think. Right. Improvise uh, or... or becoming an entrepreneur or experiment, these are all fundamentally the same things yes. in, in ways of uh, getting to a next level. Uh, and there is all kinds of advice where somebody says you should fail quickly, somebody says yes. you continue. The problem is people tend to generalize with any one uh, phenomena. The important thing mm -hmm. is to identify what's relevant in your case, in your situation, understand all these uh, different paradigms. Yes, and, exactly. and then use effectively. And that's why you need these experiences so that you exp experiment and experience a lot of different things so that you can be a, a good judge of when to give up, when to start, when, when to continue. I mean, sometimes yes. people will tell you, well, you know what, this is over. You, you have gone way too long in this particular venture. It's not going to work. You got to give up. Yes. One thing I like about your book is improvise means there's no need to ever give up. <laughs> right. You are going in a certain direction. Cirque du Soleil is a great example where nobody would recommend anyone going, uh, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, going into the circus business. I mean, it's like, right. uh, you know, getting into the horse wagon business or making, uh, making, making buggy whips, right? But they improvised, figured out and look at their success. Have you found the same thing that improve that you know no matter what direction you take if that's what your passion is you will figure it out if you're willing to change and adapt I, I think so I, I mean you certainly have to be aware of beating your head against the wall with something that's not working but I, I do find that you know my definition of improvise is to take or something ordinary and make it special and I think that's uh, whether it's your life or your job or your company to figure out how to take what you've got whether you whether you have don't have enough money you don't have the right education or you don't have the right credentials take what you do have and turn that into something special and I think that's that's the secret and if you can do that you can you can overcome failure and you just simply reinvent yourself and try something new and adapt a little bit more and I think that's the that's the fun of life. That's the fun of business is sort of reinventing yourself along the way and learning something in the process. To me, that's what it's all about. So in PR, when you got in, what, ha yeah. what were your experiences? I mean, you got into PR, not from a traditional PR track. I mean, for 36 years, you didn't do PR. Then you got right. into PR, right? right? So you said, wow, this is new. This is different. This is not like selling leather in France or or being a cabin boy in a Norwegian airlines, uh, uh, a ship line, so to speak. So what, what, what were your experiences and how did you say, this is what I want to do? Well, you know, I had worked in a record company. I had promoted my own businesses. I had uh, like the sober show for business. I, I promoted that. So I had experience with promotion and media, but I just didn't know what it would be like to, to do that as a career. 
So actually, while I was, I was a substitute school teacher in Los Angeles, I went back to night school and took courses in public relations to learn about the business of public relations. And then I went out to look for jobs, but I was so much older than everyone else applying for an entry-level job that I immediately realized that wasn't going to work. So I started my own PR firm. And I didn't have any clients, so I got my friends to volunteer to be my clients. And I created business cards and resumes and bios and all that stuff. And so I sort of invented myself in PR, and then I used those credentials to go out and look for freelance assignments. And finally, I was hired by uh, a big PR firm uh, as a freelancer, and that turned into a long-term job. So I sort of started in an odd way, but it, I had to because I was so much older than everybody else. And then once I was in the profession, I volunteered for everything. Every time a new account came in, every time a new assignment was offered, I raised my hand and volunteered for it. And over time, I gained a lot of uh, authority. I was managing a lot of business. And so I always, I never asked anybody to promote me, but I always asked for new opportunities. And if you ask for new opportunities and you're good at what you do, they tend to come your way. And that's been the secret to my success, I think. Now, one thing I, I wanted to bring out, and if this is true from your experience as well, um, each of us is unique, as, as we earlier talked. And so there, there, are, there are proclivities or tendencies in each one of us towards a certain thing. Certain, if you're a mathemat, if you are into math, if you've got the math kind of brain uh, or music kind of brain, you will tend to gravitate towards mm. those areas. So each of us knows what that is. We may not acknowledge it, but we have yeah. a sense. And so is it with you that, you know, you said about, said about promoting. I mean, you know, you, you were always entrepreneurial. You tried new things. You promoted new things. And you may have failed hundreds of times and eventually succeeded. But is it that you knew that PR is your, PR kind of symbolizes or PR holds that trait that is within you? No, it's not so. I could have done a lot of things besides PR and I think been successful. My main thing that I offer or that I have are ideas. I'm in the, I, I would work well in any kind of idea business. And today, lots of businesses are about ideas. And I think the reason I've always had more ideas than most people is because I've had so many more experiences than they do. And your experience, your ideas come from your experiences. You don't invent something new. You sort of connect what you already know in, in new ways and you get new ideas. So I, I've always been an idea guy. So no matter where I was working, that would be what I'd have to offer is lots of new ideas uh, for whatever kind of business it was. So at the core is the, the concept of ability to generate ideas, connect, yeah. uh, disparate, disjointed, lots yeah. of different experiences and create a concept. Yes, creativity, I think, is at the core for me. Creativity. So it could have been used for anything that is a creative profession, yes. anything that would be creative. So yes. is that what you promote to other people, that you need to identify what your core is and, and do that? Yes, absolutely. And I mean, we even organize our agency around not a hierarchy like I talked about before in terms of longevity. Our agency is built around four communities. And each community has a special characteristics that, that make them who they are. One group is called the strategist, and it's all about understanding data and research. Another group is called the creators, and it's all about creativity and design and ideas. And another are called connectors, and they're all about connecting people through different media channels. So each of these communities has specific characteristics of the people in it and, and if they're good at if they have those characteristics then they'll be good at doing those kinds of jobs so i so, think we even organize our company around the traits that individ individuals are passionate about so is that something you use to hire people as well that we need to understand what do you bring rather than hey i need a person to do this job exactly we have a we have an assessment tool and we ask people about problem solving about ambiguity about being media savvy and we we can tell by by they take this test we can tell which community they're going to fit into whether they're highly organized and they're good at running big teams or whether they're better at analyzing data or creating new ideas and so we fit them in by 
more by their characteristics than by their skill set. Now, is that something you also recommend when you are giving these talks at various universities that kids uh, out there should, uh, well, I, I shouldn't call them kids, but right from the start, you should figure out who you really are, identify your seats. If you can, if you're passionate about something and you can tap into that passion and learn everything you can about one specific thing, if that thing is important to a business or important to a company, it's, it's just great. I mean, we, we hired an intern recently, and he came to us, and he was a video animator. We didn't have any animators on our staff, and so we thought that was just great. And I asked him where he learned how to do that. I said, did you study video animation in college? And he said, no. He taught himself on YouTube how to do video animation. And we hired him because he's such a talented animator but he taught himself how to do it on YouTube. So he brought us a skill that we didn't already have, but it was something that he was passionate and excited about and happened to be really good at. So I think that's the sort of example that, what, of what I'm talking about. Yeah, that, that becomes very important because it's a competitive marketplace and there's no point doing something that you're, you are, that's not your best suite. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. You've got to bring that, bring that out. So uh, this is wonderful, Fred. I, I really enjoyed talking with you. I think this has been very helpful in, in helping uh, entrepreneurs who are uh, in that situation to say, well, at least a, a way to think about things. We all know these things, but oftentimes we just ignore them. You know? and <laughs> That's then, right, Nick. You're exactly right. It's been a pleasure talking to you. So thank you very much.